Hello, I'm Patrick Watson and this is Rob Scott and we're here from UC today and in this session we wanted to look at a comparison between Cisco and Microsoft's collaboration and communication journey. It parallels quite well with us because we've both UC today and Microsoft and Cisco have developed a lot over the two years and it coincides quite well with our birth, Rob. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So Microsoft Teams and Cisco uh, WebEx Teams was born roughly two years ago. So, so there's a lot of parallels there in between the times when we began the publication and Microsoft's and Cisco's collaboration journey ha have really began. So b before we get into the nuances of comparing the platforms and, and the offerings from both of the providers, let's try and define what, what the UC stack is. So, so Rob, what, what would you call the unified communications technology stack at the moment? Yeah, so it's a really, really important to understand, you know, where we've come from. So just very quickly, back in the kind of 2000s, we had video conferencing systems, we had call center systems, and we had phone systems. You know, and they're all very siloed, very disparate, didn't really interconnect very well, or if at all. But as we moved to kind of towards 2010 uh, and that kind of decade, things started to converge a little bit more. We started to get things like VoIP, um, you know, come to, come to the market in a big way. IP platforms or PBXs and phone systems were, uh, you know, quite popular back then. Um, and as they've con continued on, you know, we've got over-the-top applications and, you know, cloud kind of started to come through the back, the back end of this, uh, this, this decade. And, you know, where we are now is what I'd like to call UC3, which is, you know, cloud-delivered, SaaS applications over the top, um, as you know, uh, lots and lots of uh, providers out there now doing, you know, cloud communications platforms, um, and contact centers are very much a part of that. But they're starting to come together more and more. So we're start, starting to see this hyper convergence of of UC applications, um, and the, within that UC stack, you know, we have several layers. Okay, so let's take a look at what makes up the the composition of uh, of a unified communications technology stack. Yeah, so you have to put something together that kind of makes it easy to for us to understand, especially when comparing products and, and brands like uh, Microsoft and Cisco. So when you look at um, the UC stack nowadays, we've got cloud calling or cloud communications, cloud delivered, you know, phone system functionality, you know, users connected from the cloud. And the next layer down, we've got the, the collaboration stack, you know, and this is a really popular stack right now. Which yeah, something really with, trending. Absolutely, you know, team collaboration, video conferencing over the cloud, or well, you know, it's really, really popular right that now. That synchronous chat feature as well, which is obviously massive at the moment in terms of team absolutely, collab. absolutely. So you know, if, if 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 ever we've been cool as an industry again, you know, this is the time for us. I don't think you were ever cool in the industry, <laughs> but we we can try. So so we've got as part of the modern UC stack, we've got. Calling, we've got cloud calling, we've got collaboration. What what are the other composite parts? So a really important one that's starting to come closer and closer to the, the, the UC stack is customer experience technology. So we 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 would have called it back in the day call center technology, coming on to contact center technology with omnichannel uh, chatbots and stuff like that. So that now we we're starting to consider as part you know a core part or a core layer of that UC stack and underpinned by the business. Layer, so the business, the management layer, the, the admin layer, the the boring bit, effectively. Yeah, yeah, well, some some might call it the boring bit. Yeah. I, I quite like the, bo the boring. The non-technical might call it the boring bit, but that, that <laughs> final management piece, you're right. It's, it's a crucial piece of the entire technology yeah, stack. Yeah, absolutely. So I think one thing that you established when when you were putting together and doing the background research in this is once we've defined the stack, experience is a, is a critical part of pretty much every aspect, isn't it? Whether it's user experience or, or customer experience. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost the other way around. You know, if we start with business outcomes, then we, we, we can really start to kind of build a, a strategy, a common strategy around, you know, achieving those business goals. So if we talk about experience for a moment, you know, within that UC stack, we've got various experience components. So we have, you know, very first of all, we have the user experience. So the cloud calling element, really, you know, the, what, how does the user use the tools, how does it connect into the business, remote working, that, that kind of mobility Is it easy piece. to use, is it fun to that use, all of, of that sort of stuff. Absolutely. We kind of marry the UX up with the cloud calling piece. We then take the, the collaboration piece and marry that up against team experience. Because if you get the team experience right, you get productivity, you get efficiencies. So moving on from that one, if you get the customer experience right, you get a contact center solution in there, perfectly tickety-boo, we've got a really round, nicely rounded solution. And we hear a lot about customer experience at the moment, don't we, in terms of how important that is for, for businesses. And I suppose the same applies to both team experience and user experience. Absolutely. And finally, underpinned 
the, that management layer is the business experience. The business has got to enjoy the platform just as much as everyone else. So Rob, now we've defined what the unified communication stack is and what it's made up of and why it's important, let's have a look at Cisco's offering within within that area. So I think we, we were talking before, you know, they're, they're arguably one of the two biggest players in this alongside Microsoft. I think it, part of their business is, you know, $5 billion the collaboration unit makes up over 50% of the market potentially controlled by Cisco. So, so they play a really fundamental part in the industry. Yeah, they do indeed. I mean, they, they have a huge uh, wealth of experience in the enterprise space. Uh, they own now, yeah, you're right, more than 50% of the market since the broad soft acquisition last year. So they are one big player right next to Microsoft, probably uh, the first or second most popular brand on UC today. So, um, you know, since the broad soft acquisition, it's got a lot more interesting. They now appeal to a much more broader market because you know, they've got service, you know, service providers globally in there now. They've got more partners. You know, they've got a significant offering, um, but it is a complex story. And, you know, here today, hopefully we can tell you a little bit more about their portfolio. Yeah, and, and in terms of the portfolio, it's made up of uh, different, di and they're named WebEx. So we've got WebEx Calling, WebEx Meeting, and WebEx Teams, which effectively makes up their UC stack. Yeah, no, absolutely. They've got lots of legacy in there, though. So, you know, we can't forget that. But that's one of you know Cisco's uh, good points. Really, is that you know they do uh, as as Amy Chang rightly said recently. They they kind of build in bridges between the technologies uh, rather than kind of you know you know canning you know technology left, right, and centre. And, and we should mention while you talk about Amy, we've had a bit of a shift recently from Cisco in in, in terms of we we had a big rebrand a couple of years ago. They rebranded Spark. And the new management teams come in. They made a couple of acquisitions. Amy Chang's company, a company. A company, a company. I always like that one. <laughs> and they've and they've integrated a lot of those features within to the different aspects of the portfolio in terms of meeting intelligence and this concept of cognitive collaboration that we'll probably come on to a bit later. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The last couple of years have been really interesting. So you know, it, the, the story wasn't complete two years ago, but it's starting to look like it is now. So you have got those most recent acquisitions from a company and MindMail, the AI company, that's starting to kind of come into the collaboration portfolio in, in really interesting ways. And that's, that's giving Cisco a really nice edge at the moment. OK, so now we've taken a look at Cisco's offering. Let's have a look at Microsoft's. And I, and I think, Rob, most of it falls under Microsoft Teams in this case. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose the big, quest big question here is, how do I get from Skype for Business to Teams? Because Microsoft have a, you know, a, a key message for you there is, you know, it's not about running the two platforms, it's about running one platform. They want to move you to Microsoft Teams. It's a really, really cool offering right now. Um, they've got 500,000 organizations on the platform. They've done that in less than two years. Yeah, it's only born at a similar time to we were. Enterprise Connect yeah. two years ago, Microsoft Teams was released. And as you said, 500,000 organizations. I think it, it's probably helped by the fact that Teams is included within certain Office 365 packages. Yeah. But, but nonetheless, it's, it's, a, it's a huge player in the market. They've got a massive advantage there. I mean, they are the owners of the biggest productivity suite in the world. You know, there's, there's 150 plus million subscribers using Office 365 today. So no wonder they've got a, uh, a rapid uh, head start, you know, versus maybe Cisco, if you look at them head to head, uh, and they're doing very, very well. Um, equally, they, they, they're developing teams like at a rate of knots. Yeah, it's very, there's a lot of development. I, I was speaking to Laurie Wright, who's the general manager of Office 365 at Enterprise Connect, and, and for Enterprise Connect alone, they had eight new features. As you said, it's, it's difficult almost to keep up with the, with the amount of features and the rate of development. Yeah, no, it's fantastic to see. It's, it's a, you know, a huge worldwide platform built on Azure as well, so they've got that advantage there. Um, but yeah, we're, we're just seeing more and more teams uh, you know, news every every month on UC Today. And we should say, when we bring it back to that, that comparison with Cisco, Cisco have WebEx meetings, WebEx calling. Microsoft don't really brand it like that. It's all included within the Teams package, all of those different features. Yeah, so it's a, a little bit easier to understand the whole kind of Microsoft Teams story. So you know, certainly over the last two years, as we've seen it, um, it, it has been a much easier story to follow. OK, so let's begin with the first part of the unified communication stack, and that's cloud calling. So what do the offerings look like for both Cisco and Microsoft in terms of cloud calling? Yeah, so cloud calling, the, the, the phone system element from Microsoft and Cisco, pretty much the same, but quite different in many ways. So right now, 
Microsoft have a much more polished finish. They have two options main, in, in the main. They have kind of bring your own SIP carrier, so you bring your own telephone carrier, so you know, whether that be BT or A another, um, or they have ready to go calling pack packages, essentially, that you can just purchase. Dead easy to understand. Uh, you can buy online and you can have phone numbers migrated in or you can have you know, a brand new phone number from Microsoft. Um, but the, the nice thing there is from a calling perspective, it's available in I mean, huge amounts of countries, as you can see. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's there, it's, it's out the finishing line. I think, you know, is there much more they can do to it? I'm, I'm not sure that will remain to be seen. And, and, what, and what does Cisco do? So their, their platform and their provision of this changed a lot when they acquired Broadsoft, who, who are market leaders in the UCAS space. Yeah, so strategically, Cisco acquired uh, Broadsoft for that kind of broad cloud, that, that calling offering. So um, that was two years ago. They've been spending the last two years kind of bringing all that together, getting that kind of connected in with the WebEx and the, and the uh, on-prem solutions, the UCM platforms. Um, but it's not finished yet. They're only just starting to roll out cloud calling, as they're calling it WebEx cloud calling, or WebEx calling, WebEx calling. WebEx calling. Calling it WebEx calling. It was broad cloud, um, but now it's WebEx calling. Um, it's, it's not been rolled out. It's a, a slightly different go-to-market, so you have to go via a partner. You can't just sign up online. So. You know, if you're an enterprise customer, it's dead straightforward. You have to contact your partner, they'll hook you up, and no matter what kind of complexity you've got in your organization, they can connect calling to WebEx Teams, for example, and make it all work. Um, but the story's not finished, it's, it's not a completely polished fin finish just yet. The polished finish you're gonna get from Microsoft right now, and if you're a small business, you can, you know, you've gotta probably look towards Microsoft over Cisco. So now we've taken an, a look at the first stage of the stack in terms of cloud calling. Let's move on to meetings. Now, instantly, when I think meetings, I think Cisco probably have the edge in this because of WebEx meetings, and they potentially have a bit more of an established market in, in terms of meeting technology. Well, you are right. I mean, Cisco do have a, a wealth of experience in the meeting room. I mean, going right back as far as 2007, acquiring WebEx and, uh, and Tanberg, uh, they have a huge marketplace, more than half of the market is Cisco in the world right now. However, you know, the, the portfolios are quite different um, in, in some ways. So, you know, so there are nuances that we can probably talk about. Um, the first one is that, you know, Microsoft take a, a slightly more third party approach. Although uh, the software, which is what Microsoft do really, really well, is actually very, very uh, strong right now. I mean, if, you, if you've used Microsoft Teams meetings experience, it is fantastic. From within Microsoft Teams, uh, you know, you can connect, uh, you know, to colleagues, teams uh, very, very easily. And you can expect externally now, they've started the federation, you can connect to other organizations outside of yours using Teams. And in terms of feature development, They've done absolutely loads of funky stuff, isn't it? They're, I mean, I love a background blur. I only wish we had it now. Yeah. There, there's all sorts of other other features that they've been doing. You were telling me about the recording and transcription services, and you can you can search for information within meetings. So they're, they're doing a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, absolutely. Some really cool features. But you know, on the other side of the fence, Cisco actually d have done quite a lot of this already. Yeah. So Cisco take a slightly different angle to the meeting room. I mean, they, they've got this kind of thing called cognitive collaboration, which uh, is really, really interesting. Bringing AI into the meeting room, bringing kind of really, really insightful machine learning analytics and, and virtual assistants. You know, they've got the, the WebEx uh, Spark Assistant uh, in the meeting room now. No, not definitely not Spark Assistant. That's been gone for about two years. Oh. I think it's WebEx <laughs> Assistant. I can't, I can't forget Spark. Yeah. You know, so anyway. They, they are doing some really cool things. So you can even get insights now and, and that tell you how engaged the people in the meeting room were. Yeah, and if only we knew how engaged you were, but I'm, assume, <laughs> I'm assuming it's very. But it would be useful if we could have that sort of technology. And as you said, Cisco are doing some, some really cool stuff in that area. And it's, it's pretty cutting edge, actually, with that use of AI and ML to really maximize the most out of meetings for people. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, again, just to look at the core differences between the two platforms, Cisco have, you know, a really well uh, mature, proven kind of meeting room solution. They want to own the meeting room end to end. Uh, Microsoft, on the other hand, they're a bit more of a third party approach. Yeah, so that is a really important difference that you've highlighted in terms of Cisco want to own 
every aspect of your meeting experience from the software right down to the hardware, whereas Microsoft are primarily focused in the software, parting with third parties for the hardware. And Cisco, you've got their WebEx boards, you've got the WebEx Room Kit and the WebEx Room Kit Mini, and they're doing some really clever stuff there. So that, that's a really important difference between the two. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's move on to my favorite aspect of the UC stack, and that, that's teams and, and team collaboration. And I, d I think we know this has been a huge trend within the industry. It's incredibly popular at the moment, isn't it? That idea of synchronous chat and, and teams and extenuating workflow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, according to Aragon Research, I mean, by 2025, teams will be the primary way we communicate and collaborate. So, you know, this stuff is kicking it. I mean, I don't believe that. I think you'll still be on email and sending me, you know, <laughs> written letters in 2025. But I can imagine as more of my generation enter the workforce, we might boost the team collaboration. So from your perspective, what are the most important aspects of a team collaboration tool? What, what are sort of the table stakes that you have to have from an application? That's a good question. I mean, so, you know, team collaboration software is, is basically made up of voice, video, messaging, and the concept of channels or spaces where you can all collaborate and, uh, and communicate. And that's a key difference between Microsoft and Cisco there, isn't it? In terms of one of them calls it channels and one of them calls it spaces. Yeah, they're both called teams. One's got channels, one's called spaces. Dead simple. Let's have a think about some of the more advanced features within both of the team applications. Yeah, so advanced features, this is where teams really kind of, you know, jumps on steroids. You know, you've got bots, you've got integrations, you've got APIs, you can have this stuff on virtually any app, you know, device, you can have it in any browser, WebRTC. Um, it's really accessible and it can integrate into your daily workflows. And so with things, you know, if you think about the, the pioneer of team collaboration, which was Slack, which have like 10 mi million daily active users, uh, the success of Teams is, is extraordinary. Um, but the concept of you know, integrating you know, a single pane of glass into your daily workflow it, collaborating, communicating, and bots feeding you in contextual experiences and information. It, it's absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, we use Teams currently day in, day out, and it, it's fantastic. Okay, so apart from the names, what are the key differences between Microsoft Teams and Cisco WebEx Teams? Well, I think there's a lot of parity here. So I, I think, you know, one of the biggest things, and, and I kind of refer to Slack on this, is the, the, the integration possibilities. So right now, if you want to integrate Cisco WebEx Teams or Microsoft Teams with your critical business application, whether it be a CRM or a help desk software, then it may or may not be able to connect in. Okay, now we come on to the customer experience proportion of the UC stack, which as we were saying before is, is incredibly important. And again, I would have thought Cisco potentially have the edge in that area because of their history within contact center provision. Yeah, I mean, Cisco have uh, a huge history with contact center. So they have a, a massive portion of the market. I think they believe they you know, could be the even market leader in uh, the on-prem world. Um, certainly, uh, you know, since the acquisition of Broadsoft, they've taken on CC1, which is now called Customer Journey Platform, which is a pure cloud CCAS kind of delivered uh, solution and, and highly capable. So I would have thought that Cisco's contact center solutions traditionally would integrate better into their UC stack WebEx offering. Is that the case? What, what do Microsoft have in that area? Because I, I never thought, them, thought about them specifically within contact center environments. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of complexity on the Cisco side, connecting the legacy world with the cloud world and the new acquisitions and things like that. So there's quite a lot going on. It's, quite, it's not straightforward to understand. But what is really important to understand is that you know, they, they are connecting these worlds together. So they've spent the last couple of years kind of connecting the, you know, the new platform with the legacy platforms and that kind of thing. Over on the, on the Microsoft side of the fence, it, it's a slightly different play because Microsoft again rely on third party. So they provide APIs, but they rely on companies like, you know, Edge House Interactive, uh, Genesis and Landis Technologies to kind of develop the applications for contact centers. So, so how's that developing? Because I know you were telling me previously there was a lot of integration between Skype and third party contact center providers, but it hasn't quite been as rapid the development in terms of teams, but it's coming. Yeah, so this is where it gets interesting. So the question on everyone's mind at the moment is Skype for business server. I've got a contact center maybe from Edge House Interactive. How do I connect that onto Teams? How do I, you know, I want to move to Teams, but is my contact center going to be able to move with me? Well, right now, there are some API restrictions on Microsoft Teams side, so they're not releasing the APIs just yet. So you can't natively connect in, uh, for example, a Landis, um, 
you know, contact center solution directly onto Microsoft Teams. But that's coming, and I believe it's imminent. Okay, so so if that integration piece is, is coming and it's going to be coming soon, what what are the fundamental differences between Cisco's customer experience provision and Microsoft's customer experience provision? Yeah, so Cisco's uh, story is not completely finished, and I don't think Microsoft's is. But Microsoft has specialist vendors like Edge House, Landis Technologies. Landis have got a Microsoft Teams ready to go contact center suite. Uh, I've seen it. I, I talked to the CEO just the, the other week. Fantastic platform, but it, they are waiting for the APIs to be opened up, and that will be pretty much you know accessible to small businesses uh, upwards. On the other side, from Cisco's point of view, it's not a completely finished story. They're still developing things. You, if you're an enterprise business and you want to move to the cloud, you can do now. You know, but that you know, it's, I think it's going to continue to get better and better. Uh, and there's lots of innovation, especially around the AI piece, AI analytics, and you know their acquisitions that they've made. I think if, as they continue to continue to bolt that all that together, it's going to be a very very compelling enterprise contact center offering. Okay, let's move on to look at endpoints. Now, there's a there's a really big fundamental difference here between the two in terms of Microsoft don't make endpoints. Absolutely, yeah. So that is the big one, um, but. Endpoints are becoming very, very smart, and you know Microsoft do rely on a third-party ecosystem. Companies like Poly, Yealink uh, are doing a really good job of developing uh, endpoints, handsets, phones, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and the, and the, and we should say Microsoft are very restrictive about the partners they use. They're only using the absolute top tier, top providers to to make sure that that end kit truly represents the solutions that they've put further above in the stack. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing I have done recently is also released a native application that you can put on a Poly conference phone or a Yealink handset. And that keeps the experience consistent, so it's great for user experience and adoption. So I think that's quite nice, and it, and it means that as Microsoft Teams changes, the handsets automatically change at the same time. Uh, and one of the things you were mentioning to me before in terms of there's a real benefit there in terms of price, isn't there? You know, Microsoft have leveraged a very competitive open market to provide compatible endpoints. Yeah, absolutely. So when you've got an open ecosystem of, of vendors like that, you, you obviously got a choice. So more choice means lower prices or more competitive prices. So yes, potentially, that's one key difference there between Cisco and Microsoft is you can get lower prices from Microsoft. So if I'm Cisco and I produce, and we'll come on to some of the really clever stuff they do in their endpoints, how do I compete with the open market in, in terms of device? Well, Cisco obviously have responded to that in quite a nice way, and since they uh, are a full stack uh, provider, they they do deals, they do bundles. So where you buy licenses with handsets, and now they've got their new cool headsets with some funky uh, optimization of voice stuff hang happening. They can offer a complete bundle. Uh, I think where the price of a, an endpoint comes right down in line with most of the others in the marketplace. Yeah, and that that bundling piece is is really important because that enables them to be genuinely competitive. And we were talking before about some of the stuff that Cisco have done with their kit. You were telling me about their headsets and the, the voice optimization that they use. But but also, I, I was looking at the, the WebEx Room Kits and the WebEx Room Kits Minis, and they Cisco have over-provisioned the processing power within those devices so that in the future, as AI technology develops, the devices won't have to be upgraded. You can really leverage that future development of AI within existing devices. So I thought that was pretty clever. Yeah, no, I think that's a really smart move from Cisco's perspective. And you know, as we look at kind of all the you know the changes of these endpoints, they're becoming smart. They've got APIs now. They've got operating systems. They're doing some really cool stuff. And I think you know wearables and VR and maybe even AR are coming into our space now. I think we're going to see some really interesting stuff happening. So you know, it is a great ecosystem on Cisco side and Microsoft side. Um, so. But I think from the Cisco's perspective, it is a full stack offering uh, where everything does interoperate very nicely together. Yeah, and just to review, that is the key difference, isn't it? Cisco, full stack, produce their own endpoints. Microsoft rely on very good third parties for that. So let's move on to my favorite and probably the most exciting proportion of the UC stack, which is the management layer which no end users care about, but from a business administrator and management mm. perspective is incredibly important. It is. It is indeed. So we have the, you know, the licensing, the security, the compliance. You know, the management of this stuff is really, really important. So both vendors do a great job of giving you a portal to manage these different technologies. Um, however, you know, there's a lot more complexity on the Cisco side, I would say. So probably expect a few more portals. However, uh, you know, they are 
pretty much offering the same stuff. In terms of encryption, security, they all do an enterprise job of it. So, uh, you know, thumbs up from that point of view. When we start to look at the kind of some nuances, I think again it comes down to that kind of Microsoft go to market strategy is kind of direct and via partners, um, but predominantly you can buy direct. So they make it easy for people to, to understand their licensing, their packages, and, and calling plans and stuff like that. It is quite difficult to understand the flex plan from Cisco's side of things. I mean, Cisco's flex plan allows you to move to kind of from the old world to the new world of cloud and stuff like that, but it is a little bit more of a challenge. But from Microsoft's side, you know, their go-to-market is direct. They want to appeal to that small business, so it's very easy to understand kind of, you know, how much things cost. So you can go and buy a calling plan, for example, quite quite easily and, and understand how much it, it costs. Yeah, and you can see all that online with Microsoft as well, can't you? So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, absolutely. On the other side of the fence, though, you know, if you if you're looking at my uh, WebEx teams uh, or, you know, the whole kind of Cisco stack, then, you know, do engage with a partner. That's my recommendation. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is that because of Cisco's legacy history, which is so strong within the partner reseller service provider community? So, Rob, that brings us to the end of our comparison in terms of Cisco and Microsoft's communication and collaboration stack. What, what are the main conclusions that, that you've drawn? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the two portfolios, you know, they are quite, you know, relatively mature now, but, you know, they are still developing. I think that's a key point. There's lots of innovation happening, Cisco and its acquisitions and, and internal innovation is, you know, bringing all these things together. But, um, you know, I think it does come down to, you know, is it one tool to rule them all or is it kind of Frankenstein that you're looking for, a Frankenstein approach um, versus a full stack approach? So, yeah, I, I quite like that. So are you, are you taking everything from one vendor and you do get advantage of that? We were talking about bundle prices, we were talking about potential management synergies, or are you taking the best bit of each solution and putting that together to create your own UC stack? Yeah, I think organizations will you know, look at it with their own personal uh, requirements in mind. And again, starting with those outcomes, you know, one versus the other might suit your business. Um, certainly, you know, one big thing here is, is kind of interoperability as well. So I don't think we can forget that, is that you know, Microsoft and Cisco don't generally interoperate fantastically with the, the rest of the world. So uh, certainly, if <laughs> you want Microsoft and Cisco on the same network in the same organization, coexistence is, is going to be pretty, pretty awkward. Well, I hope that improves going forward. And we have seen some early indications that, that it might do. We saw some more integration with the Microsoft productivity apps within, within WebEx. You, you can use OneDrive, you can access the productivity apps. And I think Cisco have obviously conceded they're never going to compete on productivity apps against Google and Microsoft. So there is going to have to be some level of, of playing nicely. Yeah, well, we hope so. But um, moving to a kind of UC3 stack is, is you know, a journey. It's, it's how smooth can you get to there. I don't think there is a finishing line, um, but ultimately it's, it's, you know, giving your uh, organization and teams and users a frictionless experience. Yeah, well, that's obviously the, the key factor there. Thank you so much for watching this video comparison of Cisco and Microsoft's collaboration stack. If you want to find out more, visit the website uctoday.com and there, there are smart guides there that you can find that provide so much more detail that, than we've gone into. But for, for the meantime, Rob, thanks for talking me through it and thank you so much for watching.